Sierra Leone is preparing for their national elections. It's their fourth elections since the end of their 11-year civil war, but only the second election that's being held without UN oversight. We know that violence has been a staple in recent elections, but that got us thinking about other aspects of life in the country. Hey guys, I'm Versha, and today we're exploring what life is like in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a country of about 6 million people, located on the west coast of Africa. The majority of people there live in rural areas, and roughly 40% of the population is urbanized. Sierra Leone is a multi-ethnic society. There are about 18 different ethnic groups. Two of the largest ones are the Temni and the Mendi. The Temni are generally found in the center and northwest of the country, while the Mendi can be found in the east and the south. English is the official language. It's used in areas like education and commerce. Creo, a language that is a mixture between English and a variety of African languages, is also widely used. About 42% of people are under the age of 14 years old. This young population boom is in part due to the nation's high fertility rate, with each woman on average having about five children each. But women are also dying at a much higher rate due to childbirth. The nation has one of the highest maternal death rates in the world. About 78% of people in Sierra Leone are Muslim. Christians, the next largest religious group, account for almost 21% of the population. But many people there also continue to practice traditional religions, collectively called African traditional religion, as well as their Muslim or Christian faiths. Sierra Leone is an extremely poor country, with more than half of its people living below the international poverty line of $1.25 per day. According to the United Nations Human Development Index, Sierra Leone ranked the 179th poorest nation in 2016. Almost half of those of working age live on subsistence agriculture, but the country's mineral industries play a major economic role as well. Diamonds and iron are major exports. Overall, Sierra Leone's economy did see a downtick in 2015, following the 2014 Ebola crisis, but in recent years, they've seen some growth. The future of the economy, however, remains uncertain, given the shrinking prices of iron around the world. Now, when it's time for a meal, most families prepare their food with wood or charcoal stoves, while many in the city use gas or electricity. Cassava, okra, and beans are extremely popular in the country, but the biggest staple in the diet is rice. According to researchers in 2009, just over 200 pounds of milled rice were consumed per person per year. Rice is typically eaten multiple times a day, usually served with a number of rich stews and sauces that often include fish, chicken, pork, or goat meat. We also have to mention that Sierra Leone has been marred by conflict, violence, and disease over the last two decades, because those impacts can still be felt today. The country spiraled into civil war from 1991 to 2002. Tens of thousands of civilians died as a result. Hundreds were subjected to brutal limb amputation as punishment, and women were often subject to widespread sexual abuse. Both sides of this conflict, rebels and government forces, used child soldiers in their fights, and up to a quarter of the population was displaced. In 1999, a ceasefire was brokered and UN troops were deployed to help keep the peace, but the war still wasn't officially declared over until 2002. Then in 2014, Sierra Leone was one of the hardest hit countries by the regional Ebola outbreak. There were over 14,000 confirmed cases of the virus, and nearly 4,000 people died as a result. Citizens have grown mistrustful of the government after its perceived mismanagement of the Ebola crisis. And in 2017, deadly mudslides killed hundreds of people and displaced hundreds more. The scars and impacts of these issues affect daily life in the country to this day. Because Sierra Leone still suffers from some of the geographical and political divisions that fueled its civil conflict, a peaceful, democratic transition of power would be a major milestone for the country. But minor violence related to the elections has already broken out, and the United Nations has expressed its concern. So in this episode, we talked a little bit about the elections in Sierra Leone, but there are a ton of important elections happening around the world this year. Which one are you guys most interested in? Let us know in the comments below, Thank you for watching Now This World, and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this every week.